So this video is on the quotient rule. Now you've already done the chain rule, which is a function inside a function. You've already done uh, the product rule, which is a function multiplied by a function. Uh, the quotient rule, now quotient just means divide. So that's a function divided by another function. So I'm just going to tell you the quotient rule straight away. So if y equals um, u over v, where u and v are both functions, uh, so I could say f of x equals u of x over v of x, uh, but this is just going to make my life easier. Then the derivative of that function, now I need to get it in the right order, is going to be y dash equals v u dash minus u v dash over v squared. Now you really need to make sure you do that in the right order. So that says uh, the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top function multiplied by the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. Let's do an example. So I'm going to differentiate this function, uh, y equals negative 3 bracket x squared minus 2 over 5x plus 2. So this thing up the top, all of it, is going to be my u, and this bit down the bottom is going to be my v. So I'm just going to make a little list here. Uh, that means that u is negative 3 x squared minus 2. Uh, I'll just do v because obviously that's pretty easy. Uh, v is uh, 5x plus 2. Uh, now, I'm going to need v dash at some point, so I might just do v dash. Uh, that's just going to be 5. Uh, and I'm also going to need v squared. Uh, and that's just 5x plus 2, all squared. And it's going to be tempting there to say that it's like 10x squared or 25x squared plus 4. It's not. You've got to multiply that by itself. But we're just going to leave it like that for now. That keeps it nice and neat. Uh, lastly, I need u dash. Uh, now, have a little think about this. U is actually more like, make sure I don't run out of space here, negative 3x squared plus 6. I've just expanded that. That's u still. It's just another way to write it, but this one's a neater way. The derivative of u is going to be negative 6x. Alright, so now I have u, u dash, v, v dash, and v squared. It's really just putting it into a formula now. So y dash equals um, v u dash. Okay, so I need to multiply those two together. Uh, that's going to be negative 6x bracket 5x plus 2. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract. Uh, I'm going to put those together because that's... Um, uh, uv dash, so that's going to be 5 times negative 3, which is negative, I need to be careful because I'm subtracting it, so minus negative 15 um, x squared minus 2. Uh, and then all of that is going to be divided by v squared. Alright, that is the derivative. That's kind of the end, but we can obviously sort of play with it, make things a little bit neater from here. But everything from here is just kind of busy work. Uh, y dash is equal to, uh, I can expand that, so that's like negative 30x squared um, minus 12x. Um, now it's going to be minus minus 15, which is positive 15. Um, x squared minus 2. Uh, now, I'll just do it in one step, so I've done it, but like it's going to make my life easier if I now expand that. So that's going to be 15x squared, and it's going to be uh, negative 30. Plus 15x squared, and negative 30, and all of that is um, over 5x plus 2 squared. And I'm not expanding the bottom. It doesn't really make it any neater. All right. Um, now, I can group some like terms up the top. I've got negative 30x squared. I've got negative 12x. Oh, I've got 15x squared as well. So that negative 30 is actually going to be more like negative 15. Uh, negative 12x and negative 30 all over. Um, 5x plus 2 squared, and then you should look up the top here and see a 15, a 12, and a 30, and notice that they all have a common factor of 3, uh, and we can factorise that, so I'll bring that 3 out the front, 
um, and make that negative 5x squared, uh, negative 4x and negative 10 all over. 5x plus 2 squared. Hopefully I haven't fallen off the edge. I have. Um, but that's the quotient rule. Um, really, that's the derivative. This is the neatening up of that derivative, uh, which you will be asked to do, so you need to be comfortable with expanding and then factorising. So the quotient rule can also be combined with the chain rule or the product rule as well. Um, now here I have a function, 2x minus 3 to the power of 4, over 4x. Uh, and we can still, so it's a function over a function, so we can use our quotient rule, and we can use, use this thing here. So let's just write everything down. Um, so u is the thing on the top, so u is equal to 2x minus 3 to the power of 4, and I'm just going to come back to u dash in a minute because that's the hardest one. Um, v is equal to 4x, v dash is equal to 4, and um, v squared, well, v squared is 4x squared. Uh, I should probably just fix that up, so it's like 16x squared, so 4 squared and x squared. So I have v, I have v dash, I have v squared, I have u, and now I need u dash. And u dash employs the chain rule. And I'm going to do the chain rule the fast way here. I'm going to bring that 4 out the front. I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of whatever's in the brackets. Then the brackets will stay the same, and then the power will decrease by 1. So that gives me 8. 2x minus 3 to the power of 3. And there is u dash. So now that I have u, u dash, v, v dash, and v squared, I can put it all together and say that y dash is equal to, and I always have to do this in the right order, it's the bottom thing first, so v, u dash, v, u dash, so let's use a different colour pen. There. So it's 4x times 8, so that's 32x bracket, this thing, 2x minus 3 cubed, minus um, u v dash, so 4 times 2x minus 3 to the 4, uh, all over v squared, which is 16x squared. Okay, uh, now this is ugly because now we get into some of that sort of fancy factorising. Now that is the derivative. You could use it to find a tangent or to do something with, but if you're asked to derive it and then fully factorise, you've got to go these next couple of steps. So looking up the top, we have a term and another term, and we need to figure out what those terms have in common. So 32, 4, common factor there are 4. So 4 can come out the front. The other thing they have in common is 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 3. Now this is 2x minus 3 to the 3, this is 2x minus 3 to the 4, which is kind of like the same as 2x minus 3 to the 3 times 2x minus 3. So, they both have a common factor of 2x minus 3 to the 3. And now I just have to ask myself, what do I need to multiply that by to get that? Uh, as long as I just multiply it by 8 and x, that'll give me 32x, 2x minus 3 to the 3, so 8x. And then what do I need to multiply that by to give me um, that? Well, I need a negative, and then I need a 2x minus 3. Alright, and then all of that is going to be over 16x squared. Uh, okay, um, now this bracket, I can kind of fix that up a little bit. Uh, so it's going to be 4 bracket 2x minus 3 cubed. Um, this is that bracket now. So 8x minus 2x will be 6x. And uh, then negative, negative 3 uh, will be positive 3. And then all of that divided by 16x squared. And then one final step here, you can see there's a 4 out the front, and we're dividing by 16, so they're going to simplify, get rid of that 4, get rid of that 16, and 4 over 16 is the same as 1 over 4.
Got to take one more look at it because look at this term here, 6x plus 3. There is a common factor there of 3. So, finishing off, I can bring that 3 out the front of that bracket. And I could put it here, or I could put it in the middle, but it makes more sense to put it out here. So the 3 can come way out the front there. I'll put that 2x minus 3 cubed there. Now, uh, if 3 came out, what's left over is 2x plus 1. And then I still have that nice 4x squared down the bottom, and I've really run out of space there. That's what it is. All right, so up to the pink is where we've derived the thing itself. Onwards is where we've neatened it up, factorized it, made it nice and pretty. That's the quotient rule.